Come along and learn how Chipotle overcame the complexities of serving up food with integrity at over 3,000 of their restaurants around the world. Please welcome Carlos Landano, the Vice President and Head of Supply Chain at Chipotle Mexican Grill. Carlos, thank you for being here today. I am thank you for having me. so excited to have this conversation with you. Can you tell me a little bit about your role at um, Chipotle? Sure. I have the incredible privilege of leading the supply chain organization for Chipotle. Mm -hmm. What my team does is essentially purchase all the wonderful food that we serve at the restaurant and then move it around the country in our incredibly vast network of factories and distribution centers. So my team makes sure that all of the food goes from our supplier base into the restaurants so that they can cook that amazing food for your experience every day. I was wondering, do you think a burrito can change the world? A Chipotle burrito can, for sure. Chipotle is doing some things that are completely unique to the industry. Mm -hmm. The things that we're doing, no one else is doing out there. And so we, for example, have very high standards in terms of animal welfare. We also settle for nothing but the best ingredients and the best products out there. So we hold ourselves to very high standards, hold our suppliers to very high standards, and that's what allows us to deliver an amazing experience at the restaurant every day. I think a lot of times, if you're just doing you know, small batches of things or small amounts or an individual restaurant, that's, it's a lot easier to have that quality and to have that you know, um, ethics around the food that you're serving. But um, you guys are doing it at a huge scale. How do you um, deliver that quality at scale? So you're exactly right. Delivering that quality at scale is incredibly difficult. So normally, let's say you have a category like chicken. So um, what we call commodity chicken is chicken that is conventionally raised. Our chicken is very special. We don't allow any antibiotics. We don't allow hormones. We don't allow any steroids, nothing of that sort. So immediately that shrinks your supplier base. And keeping 3,000 restaurants in stock of that very specialized food is incredibly complex, it's very difficult. And so in order to do that, we have to have very specialized business processes, very specialized technology, and also incredibly talented people. And that last one's really important. You have to have the right people. Absolutely, people are the most important thing. What was sort of the, the main point where you guys decided to do this transformation? Why did you say, decide now is the time, we need, to, we need to make this investment, we need to really make this a priority for our business? Several different factors. First of all, we had a vision that we could become a very strong player in the digital business. And so we knew that we had to re-engineer and change the infrastructure of our restaurants but also technology had to come along. So very often I tell people that when I was in engineering school many years ago, longer than I care to remember, we would be taught that assets flow through a system, right? Mm -hmm. So a particular widget will flow through a system and it was always a tangible good, right? Well, what we've learned over the last couple of decades is there's also data streams that accompany the flow of that asset. And the data stream is very often as important or even more important than the actual flow of good. So therefore, it's very important for you to be able to understand what is going on and make decisions based off of the data that you see. So the Chipotle system is incredibly complex. We have a network of more than 18 distribution centers. We have thousands of suppliers. We have 3,000 restaurants. So at any given moment, there are nodes moving things around the country and around the world at an incredible pace. One of those nodes fails and you're going to have a problem for a restaurant, which ultimately translates into a poor customer experience. So therefore, it is very important to have, as I said earlier, a really good business process that allows you to respond to these kinds of changes and then also accompany that with the technology that will allow you to very quickly see what is going on and make the necessary changes and react. What were the considerations that you had when you were selecting a technology partner? Like, what Absolutely. were you looking for to make sure that you had the right partner to help you on the journey? The incredible devotion that we have to our customer service. So our partner had to have that same vision first. Second, it had to be a partner that understood our industry and our business model. As we were evaluating partners, we started looking at all these different dimensions to try to identify who were the folks that could, only, could, could not only accompany us on this journey, but be able to grow with us and make sure that ultimately we could become a 6,000, 12,000 or 18,000 restaurant chain in the future. So you're on um, mostly spreadsheets and other kind of cobbled together systems in the past. Um, and then you've been able to sort of implement the Oracle Cloud 
platform. Mm -hmm. What were some of the, the specific um, products that you started with? Like, what did your what did your journey for implementation look like? Um, where did you start and why? With the suite of products of Oracle, you have so many things that it's sometimes a daunting task to understand where to start. So we decided to go with the planning solution first. So we wanted to make sure that we could demand plan and supply plan the things that were moving around their network. When goods flow, right, there's also, of course, financial resources that flow as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to couple that planning engine with the financial en engine and make sure that those things work very closely together because ultimately, in the real world, they're intimately intertwined. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that those two modules were working together so that they could ultimately be the foundation to build things like master data and product development and things of that nature that will allow us to grow our platform even further in the future. What impact did that have? Like after you implemented um, those systems, the financial and supply chain systems, um, what were the results that you saw? Having the ability to see what's happening also gives us the ability to plan for the medium and the long term. So one of the key things that we saw is we were able to share information with many entities around the supply chain and be able to plan better for our growth for the future. So things, for example, like capacity planning, knowing when you're going to need your next factory, when you're going to need your next distribution center and where should you place it in, the, in your network became incredibly important for us. And so it, that is very difficult to do by hand and with precarious uh, engines and tools. So therefore, when you have that kind of technology, now all of a sudden your world opens up. Now, by coupling it with the financial planning module, we're also very clearly able to see the costs of everything that we're proposing. So that allows our executive leadership team to make the right decisions that are ultimately going to help the company grow in a more productive and efficient way. From a success metrics point of view, are there any numbers that your team is particularly proud of? Absolutely. So there are several metrics that we have, as any supply chain would have. But one of the ones that we're most proud of is service. So there are many ways to measure service. So we tend to measure what we call complete and time and accurate. And so this basically guarantees that we are sending the, the necessary food and equipment to the restaurants at the right time and with the right cost. So we've been incredibly proud of being able to improve that service metric and improve our costs at the same time, which normally tend to be metrics that people think are opposite, right? So, you, so people will normally tell you, well, yes, you can provide better service, but it's going to cost you more. That's actually not correct. When you have the right information infrastructure, you can have much better service at a more reasonable cost. So we are particularly proud of being able to do that with the technology that we've implemented. If you had the ability to give either yourself advice at the beginning of this project, um, or thinking about your peers who know this is a really vital journey to go on, maybe a little afraid. Uh -huh. um, what is your advice? Like, what would you recommend? So this is really a great question because this is also like asking, hey, how am I successful? Like, what are the things that are ultimately going to, to make me successful or are they going to make me fail? So I'll give you a few things. So first of all, start really simple. One of the very tempting things about these technologies is to add a lot initially. And so you start looking at everything that the tool can do and you say, oh, we can solve that problem and that problem and that problem and that problem and that problem, right? Oh my God, yeah, implement it all. And so it becomes a very daunting task for the teams to implement enormous solutions. So what I tell people is building blocks, small building blocks, almost not enough to give you the solutions that you need, right? But very, very small, like baby steps. And so I think the reason why that's difficult to hear is because sometimes the teams that are implementing they want to deliver an amazing solution for the business, right? And they want to do it right away. What I tell people is don't do that. Deliver a very small solution, a very standard solution, and make sure that it's very stable. And so once you have that piece stable, then build on top of it and make sure that you're adding on, right? Now, what happens is that makes implementations a little bit longer, a little bit more complex, but they allow you to build things in the right way. And they also allow you to backtrack. If you, for example, make a mistake, you can always backtrack, fix whatever you did, and then move forward. So that, I think, is one of the key pieces of advice. The second one would be make sure that you have the best people on the team from all perspectives. Internally, you have to pull the people that are absolutely fundamental to making sure that the business runs. Those are the people that you want in your implementations. And then your partner 
has to be phenomenal as well. One of the things that we do is we will actually interview the partners. We will interview the participants and we will choose who we want on the team. And not everybody makes it because you really want that. You want the best people and you want to make sure that you're investing the right amount of resource. Now, last but certainly not least is the executive engagement. You, make sure, you need to make sure that you have very, very strong executive sponsors and that they accompany you every step of the way. So things like steering committee meetings, which are not always the most fun things to do, mm -hmm. are incredibly necessary in these processes. So I would say those are the, the three key things. What are you passionate about? So I'm very passionate about making a difference for the food system in the world. I'm incredibly passionate about that. I think this is one of those things that will ultimately allow our population, our society, our kids, to grow up to be healthier and incredible individuals. And so I think today our food system has a lot of uh, pitfalls and a lot of issues that I think we need to ultimately address. So one of the things that I'm particularly proud of is through the amazing things that we do at Chipotle, we're able to set an example for people out there to go and do the right things, to raise food the right way, to treat ingredients and to treat people, to treat farmers with the respect that they deserve and ultimately cultivate a better world. Well, thank you. This was great. Thank you for having me. Watch the full Chipotle episode with two more executives and learn more by visiting the link in the description. We welcome you to connect with us on the page to start your business on the digital journey with Oracle Cloud. And just like that Chipotle guac, keep coming back for more customer spotlights. You never know what company will shine a light on next.